up, get out right out of your bed, that's your quicksand. Getting rid of anxiety in head, you can fix it. Rid of stigmas, all of them you said, we ain't listening. Just remember, try to do your best, you can win this. Maurice Bernard, state of mind. All right, it's Sunday. State of mind. What's going on, people? Um, if uh, you love what you see or even like what you see, even if you don't like what you see, I don't care. Just hit this button here, the subscription. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Just hit this. this. We need, we want to get to the next level, which is, I would say, what do you think it is, Anthony? 200? Okay. And we'll, we'll, we'll get there. But anyway, aside from that, um, who I have today is, uh, well, before I get to this person, you know, I like to tease and then show who it is. And you're going to, you're going to love who it is because he's very good looking. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, let's listen. I've had a, another one, another bout with Freddy Krueger this week. Anybody who doesn't know who Freddy Krueger is, Freddy Krueger is uh, the anxiety who keeps wanting to take me down. And it's a, it's a son of a bitch, man, what, what I go through. I think it was Tuesday. <sighs> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read to you a little bit of what that was. And it goes something like this. This is what I wrote in my journal that, I, that I've been doing every morning. I, I journal and I, it's, it's, it's great. I do some prayers and I, so here it is. Exactly word for word. Wow. It's been an incredible couple of days. Felt like I was in hell trapped in my own nightmare of thoughts. Your thoughts just control you and the fear is so painful. But what's amazing is no matter what hell you go through, it's just a couple of days you can pull through. Prayer, exercise, family, little meditation, breathing, you can get through it and you feel stronger, thank you again, Lord, for taking care of me. I love you. So, with that said, uh, my next guest gave me his book, which is amazing because it's called The Epic Journal. And I got to be honest with you. It's like amazing how things happen. It's a, it's, it's, it's a cool ass the way the book looks. You got to, let me tell you people, uh, go get this book, The Epic Journal. Okay. But what's amazing is I've never journaled. I've never done, only in the last three weeks. And then he comes in, he gives me this book and, and, I had Googled him. The book was, and I wish I would have read the book before he came in because I really wanted to read it. Not because it's, a lot of times when guests come in, I kind of, you know, take a little bit here, take a little bit there. I don't read the whole book, but I really wanted to read this book. Anyway, he is uh, the author, obviously, of the Epic Journal and owner and CEO at Epic Journey, I'm gonna get all this right. The founder and manager of Fresh Start of California. Fresh Start is where Lindsay Santani works and my daughter is part of the team. And they're the ones who told me about this person and said, oh man, he's cool. He's the, they didn't tell me he was that good, you know, as good looking as he is, but they did say he was incredible and, and uh, this and this and that. So um, here he is, Preston 
Durnford. How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, man? I appreciate that intro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first of all, let's let's get into your book. Yeah. What w- what's in your book that could, you know, potentially change somebody's life or? Well, just like you said, I mean, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people that I've known, even around a lot of high achievers, never really, really knew how to journal in what way, you know, yeah. like, how do I, you know, how do I go about this and a structure to it or different, you know, stream of consciousness style or how to prompt yourself, yeah. talk to yourself as your higher self. Right. Um, so, you know, what I did, um, I just structured it in a way, fortunately, with my a, a team of other uh, clinicians and writers and editors and stuff, and put this whole thing together um, to where it's just prompts throughout the whole thing. There's 28 principles in it, and so within the journal, it just kind of gets you to stimulate these these thoughts, these things that you already know about yourself, but yeah. by asking the right questions, you know, then they'll start to come out. Um, Typically, in some a lot of self help books, it's kind of like telling you what to do. But I wanted people to come up with their own, own ideas, so mm-hmm. I put examples of everything and a lot of different questions, and then spaces for you to write. Um, so yeah, it just kind of gets you to find out who you are, where you want to go. You know, on the spirituality side, you know, um, there's like one of my favorite ones. You're just like principle twenty one. It's your spiritual geography. Like, where is your your sacred space within your house, within nature? Yeah, uh, getting people to understand how healing nature truly is and how to use it we know these things but it's like we know i found out a lot of people's a lot of people know a lot of things but very few execute on those things that they know so that's right yeah and and i find the same thing where a lot of people talk like they want to do things yeah i got i got i won't mention any names (laughs) i got actors at my at general hospital who I know can be very successful Mm. and not just on the soap opera, like do what I'm doing, social media, blah, blah, blah. Cause it takes work. Yeah. But I'm one of those guys that's that's, when he says he's going to do most of the time I do it. Mm -hmm. I just, I just, that's the way I've always been, even though sometimes it's painful. Yeah. But there, you know, guys at work that I'm like, and I keep just, telling them do it do it and they're like yeah 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 but they never do it yeah i mean they're successful in one aspect oh, yeah, right yeah. get you so one of my favorite quotes his name's uh it's by miramoto musashi he was like a japanese sa- samurai from like 15 or 1600s he has he has a book called the book of five five rings it's a really short read uh but he has this quote it says once you understand the way broadly you'll see it in all things so once you're successful you're you're great in one aspect that translates over to many things it know? should right <laughs> it should but there's this little resistance but yeah, uh, but like and... people can talk a lot and say they want to do it and then never get never gets done. I know. Um, so is it like a journal? Like I could every day every do day. one page or how, yeah yeah. Is that the way kind of yeah. So there's two sections. So the first day, so you can do they're pretty short. So tip, it was 33 principles, but it took out five because they were kind of uh, a little advanced or a little you know, but. Um, this is like something you can do every other day, every day. And then there's a second section to where it's a morning, evening, and then stream of consciousness style for another 30 days. Damn. So it just kind of gets you into ways where you can kind of set your intentions and the tone for the day. First thing in the morning, you know, whatever your ritual is, your yeah. cup of coffee, boom. Yeah. What, what are you grateful for? Tune in. You know, what could you have done better yesterday and apply that to today? So it's all these different strategies and techniques. Yeah. Um, how to apply into and into your own blank journal by the end of it. So yeah. at the end of it, it's like, you know, go off on your own journaling journey and learn how to design your life and dreams and um, throughout. And I want to write another book as I've been doing more podcasts lately and people are hearing a little bit more of the, the my dreams that I've touched and. I've touched everything that I wanted to do and, and um, I set my limitations based on what I wanted to achieve, but I met everyone I wanted to do. I've stepped into every experience so far. Yeah. Some things worked, some things didn't, but yeah. I tried it all. Um, but yeah, I mean, I kind of wrote through everything that I've, that I've done and it's been very unique, but um, 
I think it's a it's a recipe. And I think when every everyone, I think it all boils down to because I've had my own struggles in life for sure, and I've been working in behavioral health for what nine, ten years now. So I've worked with thousands of people, and um, you know I have a story that I can get into as well. But um, yeah, you know, we're gonna get into that. Yeah. So I mean, but just the fact that let me tell you something. Man. What you do with Fresh Start mm -hmm. is, I told Lindsay the same. It's like you're doing God's work, mm. man. And, you know, in my eyes, you don't have to do anything else. Yeah. You've done it. Now, you can do books and all that and everything, but just what you've done with Fresh Start to to change people's lives. And Fresh Starts is an intervention. Uh, what, it's no, a, it's a subacute detox. So if anyone's like dependent on any substances, yes. we get we medically tape, like get them all on a taper and take them right. off. So we get them off any substances and then work on their the mental health side after they're feeling better. Damn. Yeah. Because you know, that's not easy. No. <laughs> the, yeah, and God bless the team, man. You know, and your daughter too, yeah. and Lindsay, and everyone that's like, they get all the praise, you know, like my brother and I started in 2016 and then we came, came from. How nothing. did you start that, man? So my brother and I started up another company called Epic Transformations. It was uh, like a marketing company. And so we saved up our money and bought into this detox. Uh, it was a different name. Actually, no, same name. But then we ended up getting the other partner out and. Um, and I met that's how I met Lindsay right away because I was in detox. She's fantastic. Oh, man. she's a rock star. Super smart. Damn. Um, yeah. So we started 2016, just you know, just my brother and I, and uh, met Lindsay. I met Lindsay when I was in detox myself, and so she was the admissions what girl. The? And then she has funny stories about me in there. But um, yeah. So I met her there. My brother and I started doing well, and then we had this opportunity to buy into it. And then I was like, hey. So Fresh Start was already there in 2016? Yeah, but the lady who owned it was struggling with it. And, oh, and, and she so said, my brother and I were like the charismatic, like, good. you know, full life guys. And so we came in and brought that energy to it. Yeah. Damn. So yeah. then you 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 bought into it. Yeah. And you hired people. Yeah, Lindsay was the first one. Yeah. Damn. I met her when she was she helped detox me. She was like the admissions person over there. And then I told Dustin, like, hey, you got to meet Lindsay. And then we met, and then boom, Lindsay came in. I mean, seriously, how proud are you of that, man? It's pretty amazing. I mean, that's got to be the – it's kind of like, you know, in my career, like I've done, you know, General Hospital for 30 years, and I've done this. But this is what I'm most proud of, mm. this, this show, because yeah. it, it hits people. Absolutely. And you with what you do and how difficult that is, I don't have to have people come in here – <laughs> <You know? laughs> but that's why i was talking about praising the team man because like yeah i run groups there and stuff with the journal and i try to interact as much as possible but uh they're in the trenches of it like that's your daughter true. like she's working intensely with them you know and like it's just man it wouldn't be the same without them like they're in the thick of it now it, you did know? you do that early on i did a little bit yeah until it was more it was more beneficial to me being on the outside to kind of help generate the business, oh, get people to know. But right, uh, right. I've always loved working with the people. So, like, yeah, you know, it's amazing. It's and inspiring. you get you get sponsors and stuff to help, or no, it's all through insurance. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. So we're like in network with a lot of different insurance companies because typically people are have more like HMO policies and stuff. But um, yeah, it's all through insurance. Wow, man. Yeah. And how often do you go there? Like four or five days a week. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I try to be down there as much as possible. And you're like the big boss and stuff. <laughs> Lindsay's the big boss. <laughs> I'm just in the back, you know, supporting the troops. But uh, yeah, yeah. And you go there four times a week, five times? Yeah. I run groups on Thursdays now. And now I'm doing another one on Friday, taking them down to the beach. Because that's what I mean. Getting them down to the ocean since we're so close, you know. Yeah, what is it? Because my buddy, my buddy uh, Majid, say his name, even though he always tells me, "Say my name, say my name, say my name." Say my name. <laughs> it's a song, ain't it? Yeah. Um, he's a he's a life. What he's a hypnot he hypnotizes, mm. and he he did hypnotize me 
and I, I never got on a plane without anxiety. He hypnotized me. I've been on eight planes without anxiety. Really? So I think. Have that, you ever jumped out of a plane yet? No, because I know you do. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Sorry, I got you outside. All right, we'll yeah, go yeah, back yeah. on yeah, that because yeah, I yeah. want to know about that too. <laughs> but he, this, this, and he, this guy's a ridiculous, crazy kind of guy. He's from Pakistan, mm. but he takes everybody to the ocean all the time. Puts mm. them in the ocean and, and like five o'clock in the morning when it's freezing and. Yeah. I'm like, I guess that that's part of gaining some peace, right? Or Yeah. I mean, jumping in it. I'm in the water every morning, typically. I'm what? in the water every day. No matter if I surf in it or I'm free diving in it or just doing a sand run and jump in the ocean. But I was just on a, a another podcast with a buddy that was, I was talking about the same thing. He's like, yes, because you get it. But just jumping in it. The ocean's alive, man. It's like a giant organism, and it's even when it's cold, it's your body just it's like primal, you know. It just wakes you up. Is you that know? like the plunge? Yeah, it's like the plunge, but like with the ocean's alive, you know, like full of energy and stuff. It's just like some to it. Then you start to crave it. But I like the part when I, because I like it when it's cold too. I go in my board shorts, jump out and swim. But I like what this does because I have my own mental health struggles for sure. You yes. know what I mean? And um, what I love being uh, i like being afraid of things and pushing through it i kind of I know, I have this dude. relationship but when every time i go out the ocean i'm walking up this thing i start listening to this thing oh it's cold i oh, just don't do it just sit by the beach you know yeah it doesn't want to do it it has this resistance and then i just have a way to kind of reprogram it and then i i get in there and yeah I'm, I'm you know look i have a plunge at home they sent me a plunge right <laughs> but i but you know it's gonna i i i think maybe after this bout, I just said, you know, the thing about what makes people, or I should say myself, do things is fear. Mm. When they, like, once I go through a battle with uh, anxiety, it scares me so much that I will jump in that ocean now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know? Because I don't want to do that again. Mm -mm. And if jumping in the ocean or going in the plunge, mm -hmm. so even now I will go in the plunge, even though a month ago I would have been like, <laughs> no way. <laughs> no. But I'm trying to do, I'm trying, I'm trying to make the uncomfortable comfortable also, because mm. I'm a little bit of a wimp in, in like when I'm out in the cold, I'm like, oh, it's freezing. And so what I've been doing, which is actually kind of working, is I go out in the, in, I, I, if it's cold, but I don't say anything. Mm. I don't. I don't judge it. Yeah. I just. It. I, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes what I did also, with, ball of fear that I had when I in the morning before this bout. I said I love this feeling as mm. opposed to oh what is this, mm. oh no what is it going to happen again. I say, oh, I love this feeling. This is the greatest feeling. It kind of went away, man. Yeah. Because you got to sit in it. You do. Right? And you got to feel it to heal it. You know? So what's your mental health? Uh, uh, pro you have, because uh, I'm bipolar. Okay. And a depression and anxiety. Yeah. But I know alcohol, which is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Because like. You do that. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of people have those feelings and they cope with it with these things. Everyone has some way of coping with it. Right. Um. You know, in 2015, my dad committed suicide. Yeah. You know, and then... Uh, why, why did he commit? You know, he's also bipolar. Oh, he was depression. bipolar? Yeah, depression. And um, You saw him go through manias? Oh, yeah. He was on all the... Lithium? Lithium. Yeah, That's yeah. It's fucking great for me. Yeah, yeah. He was on lithium, and, you know, he was always kind of like a bull in a china cabinet. Extremely successful. Uh, he did, like custom concrete work like stained floors and all this stuff out in palm springs area so charismatic cool dude you know yeah, he's fun to be around but he'd go home and shut the curtains and shut the world out and and uh and he was on medication and on medication yeah what was it work not obviously not working for him yeah no no i mean because then he started taking you know they gave him clonopin and stuff to chill him out so he has on this concoction of stuff but you know like he didn't have any new tools, you know, he's a smart man in other ways, but he just didn't apply any of these, this like deep work, you know? And then he'd be high and then he'd crash, right? Yeah, he'd crash, yeah. And the crash was depression, like yeah. bad, right? Yeah, bad. Like, I, that's what I yeah. had, yeah. And I always heard, you know, since I was younger, 
How old were you? Uh, when you passed? Oh, yeah, I'm 34 like now. So, 2015. So, yeah, nine years ago. Oh, that's it? Yeah, yeah. So, wow. um, you know, and I heard it, him saying that, that he was going to, you know, commit suicide all the time. One day you're going to wake up. And I was like, you know, and, and that starts to program you, hearing that a lot, right? And then, you know, his 2008 with his business went down. He's trying to keep it afloat, right? And, um, yeah, he and where's your mom at this point? They divorced when I was eight. By eight. We moved well, out to Arizona. A lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think over time. And what happened? He was, did he hang? Hangs? Yeah. Yeah. So he lost his his beautiful home. It's all this beautiful in Ranch Mirage. Uh, oh, big no. trees around, like just a style and home. He lost it. that? Yeah, he sold it and they moved down to a tiny condo down the street and had to drive by. Like it was the house, you know, in that area. Clancy Lane's by that. Damn. Like, and he had to drive by it every day. And then, oh. you know, and so one day I got a call. I was at the gym. This Officer Santiago guy uh, called me and told me what he did, you know, and so. My brother and I, fortunately, were really close our whole life. And how did you? How did you take that, man? Both of him and I just got even closer, you know. And um, you know, and we had to go down and get clothes for his funeral, so we went to his house, and so we got to see like he hung himself and like leaned into a picture of him successful, a picture of my brother and I, you know. And he wrote my brother a letter. I never saw the letter, but it was like, "Take care of your, take care of Preston," you know, and. Um, you know, I remember the last thing I I uh, I did. My brother's picking out clothes, like crying, and I kind of kept my cool, you know. And uh, I saw his bed was unmade, and so I sat in the bed and just like smelt him, you wow. know, and just like felt him. And that was the last place he was in. I got to smell my pops and just sit in it, and um, yeah, I just kind of went wow. through. It. Yeah, yeah. And then what happened? I mean, you. Did you go into any kind of depression or? No. So my background before that, though, my like I was addicted to heroin for a long time. Oh. Yeah. I started when I was like 18 or 17. You know, I, my older brother started doing it. Then I followed him. What is that? But what we were a heroin? year sober before my brother, um, before my dad passed. So I was like, oh, you... I, I was about, I, I got sober 4, 4, 14. He passed December 21st, oh, 2015. Lucky. So I had a little bit of time. Lucky. But I didn't, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. then you would have been heroin up to the, you know. Yeah, but I just like. What I is heroin like? You know what? We're, some, we were just talking about that recently, and it's been so long ago. Well, what is the high like? Is it like. It, someone put it in, because I, I kind of forgot, really. But um, it, it described as like melting in like a, like a jar of warm honey. <laughs> <laughs> you That's know? cool. You man. know, so someone described it like that. You're just. Ooh, you know, like everything's gone. And, and cozy. They're pro you don't think of your problems. No, no. So it's real warm and cozy. And that's the scary part about yeah. it. Like most drugs, yeah. they make you feel so good. Yeah. But it's almost like. Well, when you get physically dependent on them, is the, the tough one because with when I, my brother started smoking heroin, right? And so I just ended up doing it one day and I knew nothing about drugs. You know, I raced BMX and motocross and right. just, you know, an active kid and then end up doing this. And I was supposed to go ride my bike. I was probably 18 years old. And my, they called me by some friends like, hey, let's go ride. And I was like, I'm sick. And they're like, well, because you're doing that heroin. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, you're withdrawing. I'm like, what's that? I, I didn't even know that. So I just started doing it. Then I was dependent on it before I even knew it. Damn. And then I just the journey went on for another five years of it. And how five years of trying to get yeah. off it? Yeah, probably five. And yeah, how six. difficult is that? To oh, so I went to a county funded program, so I didn't have insurance back in the day. And um, so these county funded programs are where people come out from prison or straight off the street. You know, uh, they're two really good spots, but. To detox, you've got to sit there and shake it out. Oh, so I couldn't ever get past it. I wanted to be sober so bad, man. Really? Oh my gosh. Yeah, because I grew up like idolizing all these guys in action sports, right? And constantly watching them. And I was good at all my sports prior to this. And I just wanted to go out and live, yeah. man. But I was like a diabetic. I was so dependent on this thing. And I couldn't because it takes maybe a few weeks, a month to just get through this inner craving of it. 
And so my brother, I'd after he got sober a couple years before me. So I remember seeing him, you know, he's a stud muffin, you know, like I was still using, he was two years sober. I watched him on Instagram back in the day and he's hanging out with pretty girls on the boat out in Lake Havasu. He had some money, you know, he looked good. And he called me like, P, you know, you want to get sober? And I was like, finally, I said, yes. And I went and met Lindsay and that was my first medical detox. Wow. And it was, uh, like. It was still challenging, at, you know, that you still have some residuals, but I mean, like, night but and day. The something, was it Lindsay that clicked for you to say, now I'm going to do it? It was just the detox part. Like, I wanted it so bad, but I finally was able to they get you on medications, right? We get you on them, and then we taper you off them in like a 10-day period. Um, but it's just like I'm oh, fascinated by so this. So nice getting it, like getting off of it. You have some residuals, and then you still have some behavior. So that shaking, it's like shaking. It's like the worst feeling ever. It's like, yeah, you're just constantly tossing, turning. Oh and my goodness, craving it. And what is your? And then your mind's me- messing with you, right? It just wants to use the whole time. It's like this beast, like you said. Um, what'd you call it in your letter? Yeah, yeah. Your uh, what was the character? Oh, Freddy Krueger. Freddy yeah. Krueger is sitting there just like, come on, man. You know, it's just calling you. Oh, man. Like Freddy so Krueger. it's mentally. I'll make you fist- better. Yeah. And then you met Lindsay. And then you got, you, what? Uh, I'm just into this. Yeah, yeah. And then you get through it. And how is that feeling when you fight? Fi- because it's like my stuff that I've been through. It's like when you get through it, you just, it's the great, you almost have tears of joy, man. Yeah. Because you did it, right? Yeah, I mean, you like. How do you like this interview, Anthony? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I mean, too, you know, and the other thing is like, you. what's really exciting is why I love working with the clients and people that are in, it's it's a new life, you know, within this life, like. Because you get to feel feelings again. You get to feel yeah, that's music. That's what I'm talking about. You know, you get to feel energies and people. And and so it's all new because everything's been suppressed. So you come out and you listen to the right song, you get goosebumps, yeah, you know? And that about. makes people uncomfortable sometimes because you're feeling. Yeah, yeah. So, which can draw them back to using because they don't like feeling. Uh, so as soon as you have to reprogram, it takes why a lot of people relapse because it takes time. It's a journey for sure. And that one day at a time thing, which they, you know, translates over to recovery or whatever. But you have, it's this whole process of getting comfortable with your feelings and going deep and and, and being willing to peek behind the curtain of things you did and accept them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And And to love yourself. Yes. And there's another thing, I hate talking about it so much because it's, (laughs) but but I'm, I'm into it. Also, ego is a motherfucker. Yeah, it is. And 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 pe- maybe some people don't think they have an ego. Um, I'm trying to chop away at that son of a bitch because mm-hmm. mine was really out of control for a long time. It tries to take you out completely, huh? completely. Yeah. And and now that we're talking about drugs and alcohol, uh, I won't get into it, but I have two friends who just they're not here Mm. and they're both bipolar and uh, alcohol and whatever um but yeah you know you 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 start putting in ego alcohol drugs mental illness how do you get through that man i know because i know with just my stuff that has i have none of other stuff like alcohol and all how difficult that is. I can't imagine with everything else, even for you with trying to get off heroin. Yeah. I mean, son of a. Yeah. I mean, it gets, when people really want it to, I'm like, you got to fight for it, you know? And then you don't have to anymore. It's not always a grind. You yeah. Know? Like life gets lighter and it's, you know, like it's no longer an option anymore. But you got to, you got to get through this, like this period of the season of it. To where you have other me- coping mechanisms and stuff like that. Like, yeah. that's just like, you know what that does. And if you truly love yourself, you're not gonna go and do these things. Right, exactly. So, the biggest thing is, is like what I tell everyone is like, you gotta learn to be your own best bud, you know? And, and that's why I published this because this teaches you 
how to become your own best friend. In the dark times when no one is there available to, to call or anything, you have you and you have a pen and paper. And, um, you know, like you have these different ways of your own perspective on, on these things, you know? So, Do you have any cravings now? Oh, no. No, I stopped. No, no. That shit, that, 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 that ends? No, I have this crazy. I just did some body uh, work actually yesterday. Uh, her name's Leanne. Yeah, well, honey, what's Leanne's? <laughs> what's her company name? She's not there. But anyway, her name's Leanne. She owns a place called Divine Experience, I think, in Laguna. Right. And I did it yesterday morning. It was like 90 minutes. And it's all body work, you know, because like your body can store these things within it. Right. And so she will pinpoint these areas. So I, I never she doesn't know nothing about me. Right. So when you're going and getting hypnotized, it's kind of falls in line with some of this stuff. So there's a, a book called The Body Keeps the Score, which is pretty cool, but um, similar to this. So she's saging me yesterday. Right. She's like, what's going on with your mom? I'm like, what? And then this is before we get into the body work. It's all energy healing sound bowls. Wow. She's working through my liver and pinpointing and just asking me. She's like, what? No, nothing about me. What 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 happened with you? What happened to your dad? I'm like, wow. And and down by my ankle, right? Yeah. And then she goes up into my knee. She's like, What happened to your brother? I'm like, and then going into deeper, really, she's like, Your brother's trying to come through and you're, you know, suppressing him. I'm like, she didn't know anything about oh, it. Oh, I'm crying. And she's as I'm on my back, she's going through this. She's like, you need to accept that your brother and your dad passed. And and you're storing so much of this in your body. And uh, to the point where I got ended up getting diagnosed with a, uh, a blood disease. It's like one in a million. It's like a, my hands get really red. And she was telling me, she's like, because you haven't dealt with these deeper things, which I thought I did. She's telling me, like, to say these things out loud. You know, like, Dustin, Dad, you know, like... Um, I accept that you're gone and, and all these powerful things she's saying. And she had me said this, say this one thing. And I can't really remember because it was just so much. And I'm sitting there, uh, 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 yeah. I couldn't say of these course. things because I was like saying goodbye to them even more in a deeper yeah, level. Yeah. And I was just going through it. But the how when I walked out of this thing, this girl, like the work she did, the deep, who is she? Maybe I should go. Oh, man. Well, afterwards, it was we'll incredible. Hook me up. Yeah, for sure. It was the most... now your brother died. I didn't. What happened? Yeah, 2015 August. I think 19. Of 2019. I'm sorry. 2019. He passed. Damn. This reason. Yeah. So he started. You know, like fentanyl. Have you? As you? Oh heard, my right? goodness! Is a crazy thing. These back when we were doing it wasn't around. Um. So he wouldn't go and do heroin because he was. He would mess up and get well and I would, you know, and uh, he would try to drink. Yeah. And, you know, he was just wasn't really geared to go out and then try to be a and have a cocktail again. Or he always ended up going full speed. But he went out and got one of these fake pills. It looks like an Oxycontin or something like that. Um, but it was a stamped pill, which they do these days, which has fentanyl in it. And so he went out on a. Uh, fishing trip with our doctor at the time and someone did that did business development for us and um we got a call at like eight o'clock at night and you know my stepdad's crying you know dustin passed because no one can get a hold of him for a day so apparently when they were about to leave they all did their boat trip they had pizza he went to his truck and must have took it or snorted it or something like that and just fell asleep with his truck wow. apparently they found him with the truck running or something like that the next day um so yeah that was two, yeah, august 2019 yeah damn man yeah, we were close oh you know so you know i mean i think uh it's it's a different game changer the people that used to dabble with certain substance people go out and do some cocaine right and yeah and be cool you know and um it's a different ball game you know people don't know like I, uh, yeah in the work that i do i i get to see what happens in the shadows of society and the things that are happening yeah that you just they're really not uh broadcast or people really don't know too much there's some good stuff coming out now but man people are passing from you know like laced weed with fentanyl on it and, and these things like it's a different ball game so it's people a, that used to dabble yeah aren't but i think you know you because you got a you got a great head on your shoulders and you know what you need to do to get yourself like you did went to this lady with the body thing and you go into the ocean 
That's what's saving you. That's what I'm addicted to. That right. Like, listen, I want to be, I want to live dude. light, man. Yeah. You know, because I've lived dark and I've had those whispers. I of get like, it. You know what my dad did, and I've lit. I don't. I don't want to live like that. Yeah. So I will go deep as possible, find the right people, push my brain, push my mind to the ocean, and run and and go deep because I found that you can just there. There, it's you may think you're light, right? Like you may think like oh, I've done some work. This yeah. Until you do the right thing, and then like I I left that energy healing yesterday crying. Because man. I thought I do all the right things. I left that, man. Yeah, man. You know, like gliding. And I was so I was crying out of gratitude because of I thought I was doing enough. And then I did it with her. I'm still going through all that stuff yesterday. That's amazing. what's saving me. And that's the that's it's weird that hearing you talk is making me feel like I know what I'm not doing. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I look, yeah, I'm trying. Yeah. Um, but I'm not I need to do more and I'm going to do more. Yeah. Because otherwise the darkness will keep coming. It does. I know. And yeah. All right, listen. Yeah. I've kept you enough. You're great. You were great in this interview, so um I want to say to the state of mind audience, I wanted to talk about a few other things, but I think we're already. Gosh, you're kidding me. The sky died, man. Whatever. You, you. This has been one of my favorite interviews. I'm not joking, and I've had uh, many. <laughs> uh, let's just say this about. First of all, now that you've heard him talk, and you know how knowledgeable and spiritual he is and this book the epic journal go pick it up uh you know i guess amazon or wherever you can yeah buy the epic journal.com what is it the epic journal the epic journal.com mm -hmm. epic journal.com epic journal.com mm -hmm. and you can get the book and you heard him just now this guy was just going deep you know, not you know. When you when you when you get in this chair and you go deep like he was doing, that's how we help people. And because there's people out there who lost their father, who lost their brother, who don't know how to cope. Yeah. And after watching this state of mind with Preston, they're going. Oh, okay. There is hope. If I did this, if I did that, if I do this. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. State of mind. Yes, See sir. you later, bro. Thank you. So uh, next week, next Sunday, we're going to have Kasten Chamberlain. She's a, a friend of mine who I've known since, since she was a little girl. And uh, at one point, I believed she was bipolar. And she has a story that I think you're going to want to hear. A lot of different things, a lot of, you know, a lot of things happened. And that is next Sunday. State of mind. Thank you. Bye.